Hi, I'm Evan. I'm Sam. And we're based up here in the Pacific Northwest, and this is our 30-foot dome from Pacific Domes in Ashland, Oregon. We, in our early relationship, we went camping and hiking all the time, and that has just kind of evolved with us. And now, like when we were building the dome, I was like, I feel like we're like, kind of like we're two steps away from camping. Like <laughs> we're in a tent kind of, but we have all of our stuff and we're comfortable. Yeah. I mean, some people would just say glamping, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know which it, it is in reality, it's what we're doing, you yeah. know, just full-time clamping. <laughs> you know, like, no, this is our home. Which, when you do it full-time, sometimes it's not so glamorous, you know, <laughs> but you learn. <laughs> yeah. Alternative living for me is like kind of being more in tune with nature and being closer to the land. And being in the dome, we are hyper aware of nature, what's happening outside. When it rains, it's very loud in here, but also like very meditative to get that beautiful ripple sound. And the way that we just kind of have to interact with the land, we have to think about it more than you would in a house. And I really, I love that. Cause like, I remember before we looked at tiny homes and doing like that trailer kind of set up mm -hmm. or living out of our van and setting that up. And then we just have a lot of hobbies and things that we- We take up too much room. Yeah, we take up <laughs> a lot of room. And so like, while we really like the tiny home idea, like 200, 300 square feet, we just knew it wasn't gonna cut it. And so uh, dome, I feel like is a halfway. Mm -hmm. It's like bigger than a tiny home, definitely alternative living, the best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> so our dome is 700 square feet. It's built on a post and beam platform made out of treated lumber. And it's got 15 foot ceilings and big bay windows and a huge skylight. Behind me, we have our stairs and railing up to our micro deck. Our railing is actually made out of uh, reclaimed redwood branches from California that were given to us by our host mate, Timmy. Um, so we patch those together to make kind of an organic, unique railing. Kind of fits the vibe of our surroundings. In addition to the dome, we have a composting outhouse. We also have a bathhouse and an outdoor shower. All right, let's go check out our dome. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our dome! dome. <laughs> I love our huge bay window and seeing all the trees and just being really close to nature in that way. Mm -hmm. I love having everything circular, everything that we own is just right here, yet it feels like we have different sections of the dome, yeah. Yeah. like a little pie or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a pizza slice. We have our little zones in our areas and uh, it kind of makes it fun that you can visually see everything. There's no walls or barriers that make it feel enclosed. We have this huge skylight that uh, brings in all this natural light. We get to see the stars and the trees at night, which make it really awesome. Yeah, we watch the moon yeah, and rise we don't, and fall over us. Yeah, and we hardly use any electricity. We don't have any lights on right now, and it's just beautifully lit. We don't turn our lights on until pretty much after the sun goes down. So it's kind of cool. Behind us, we have our kitchen area, and I'll show you around. Um, right here is our kind of open pantry. One of the perks of the dome, again, we like to see everything. Everything is right there in our vision. So no cabinet doors. We get to see everything that we need and kind of pick at it as we need it. We have our normal size fridge. Uh, we opted for this because Sam and I both really like to cook. Our fridge has been working out really well for us. It's a low energy, which is really nice because we have a small circuit breaker that we run off of for low energy usage. Next to the fridge, we have our kind of counter space slash pan storage. And then we have our oven. Um, we opted for a gas range versus an electric because we could convert it to propane, which was actually a lot easier than we thought it would be. You just got to replace some nozzles and there you go. 
our oven runs off of two 40 pound propane tanks, which actually is still going since November 10th. So for 60 bucks in propane costs, we've run for eight and a half months. Our hutch over here is kind of where we keep our coffee making stuff, our tea. We have our spices, you know, our coffee mugs or cups. And then behind us is uh, the sink. And we built and made this all secondhand. So we got the stainless steel countertop from a restaurant salvage yard. The sink came from the reed store. And we had to cut it out and, and install it and plumb it to our water tank. Finally, we got our, uh, our running water, which is a huge upgrade for us because we were running off of uh, water storage containers for about six months. So, <laughs> so yeah, life is a little more uh, luxurious now with the running sink. Behind our kitchen area is our bedroom and also a source of our ventilation. This is a eight foot by four foot roll up window. So we can actually roll this section up and it creates a nice big open space where we get a cross draft. Next to our kitchen is our bedroom. It took a while to get used to our bed, just kind of being in the whole dome, like it's a part of the kitchen and the living room and all the other spaces. But adding touches of our old room to it kind of made it feel more homey, like our little flags and some embroidery projects from our friends and just our toiletries, things like that. It kind of made it separate, and but I love it. We utilize under the bed a lot for storage since we don't have a closet anymore. We have a lot of things under there to kind of put things away. We have our chest full of blankets and all those kinds of things. In uh, 2021, we had, uh, we were living in town and, and, you know, found ourselves like needing to move. And so we uh, were like, man, like the housing market's crazy right now. There's no way to buy a house. We didn't want to go to apartment because I do woodworking, Sam makes soap, I paint. It's like we just not enough space and I wouldn't be able to do any carpentry in a, an apartment. It's like, what are our options? And so you're like, man, that dome idea sounds really good right now. And it's like, well, where do we, where are we going to put a dome if we want to build one, you know? And so it's like, well, our friend, our friend has some property out in the county. Like maybe he'd be interested in letting us rent a space on the, on the corner and build something. And so I, I called him up and I came out and checked out the property and we sat down and had dinner. And I presented the idea of Sam and I coming out here, building a dome and paying rent. And uh, they were all for it. They instantly liked the idea, thought it was really rad. Um, yeah, just immediately it was like, let's do it. Uh, we found our little corner on the property that was undeveloped and kind of taken over by blackberry bushes and weeds. And it's like, what about this spot? And it's like, yeah, it's, we don't use it, you know, so yeah, so we made a, an agreement. We pay 500 a month here for our, our space. We help with chores around the property when needed, like taking care of the chickens and the ducks, you know, putting away the goats at night. Now for a brief message from our sponsor, Fenkyo. Do you enjoy a good movie night? We sure do, whether it's at home or in our bus camper. And that's why we like our Vankio Leisure 470 Pro. It's the world's smallest native 1080p LCD projector. Easily connect your phone, computer, PS5, or smart TV stick, and boom! Enjoy up to 250 inches of stunning clear visuals and excellent audio with its built-in speaker. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your favorite stories. Thanks to the Leisure 470 Pro's ultra-fast 5G Wi-Fi technology, your viewing experience will be ultra-smooth. And we just love how tiny it is. It's just so cute. Mm. It's so powerful and portable, too. It's perfect for tiny homes on wheels and great for outdoor movie nights. See the link in the description and get Vankio's best outdoor portable 1080p projector today and save $20 off with code TINYHOUSE. All right, back to the show. Next to the bed, we have our living room that faces the big bay window and kind of the divider of the living room to the rest of the space is our little media area. We have our record player, some games and books that we really love, all of our like just little knickknacks. 
that we have and it's awesome to like have this space and look up and it's just poof, big window Behind our entertainment center here is our living room. This is where we spend the most of our time. Evan is here usually drawing and getting inspiration from the outside natural world. We have all of our books and just favorite items here with us. This area is kind of our sacred space of being cozy and comfortable and just we wanted to feel at home in this space. This is this is it. So this is kind of its own little half circle of just comfort and a beautiful view. And we see so much wildlife just outside this window. It's so relaxing being in this area. I think every morning we spend a couple hours just in here drinking coffee, reading, drawing, just kind of embracing this whole area. So since we don't have walls or cubbies or closets, we have to get really creative with our storage space. And one way that we've done that is utilize this ottoman. This thing is full of computers and DVDs and just things that would normally go in like a drawer in a normal house. But since we don't have that, we have to find creative ways to put our things away and we also kind of utilize the space behind our bookshelves here to just kind of give everything a home but also kind of put things away too. Behind the living room we have our little workspace. Um, Evan has his desk for drawing. This is it's both of our desks but I spend a lot of time here with my soaps and doing recipe work and just kind of my think space. I've got my printer down here with me. And also again, since we don't have storage, we try to find a desk with storage that we can use. <laughs> we started prepping the land last February. So February, 2021. Mm -hmm. And we had to clear out this whole area of blackberries and grass and everything. Started with the foundation, built the post and beams up, did all the joist work and the platform put the plywood on and then did the riser wall. And then it was like, okay, we're ready for the dome. And so we, uh, we made a build date, um, we invited all of our friends. Yeah, even though it took us 12 hours to do, it's a relatively simple method. It follows a pattern and every one of these bars is labeled. You start at one point, which actually the tape is still there. You start opposite of the door and you go either clockwise or counterclockwise and continue that. Mm -hmm pattern up until you get to the top and you build it in in layers and there's yeah. like there's so rows like five kind layers. Of. One, two. yeah there's five rows as we got towards the top it slowed down the first three rows went really quick and then uh, the top ones because we didn't have tall enough ladders and just out of and, yeah enough hands um, it was an awesome day we had all of our friends out here and we got it done yeah yeah could not have done it without them that's for sure yeah yeah thank goodness for them and next to our workspace and table that we do that stuff at uh, is our source of heat for the dome in the winter. This is a comfort built HP 61 pellet stove. Most people use these for like basement heating that heats the whole house. We opted for this beast of a model because we originally started with a wood stove in the dome and quickly realized that it was um, far too much work and not enough heat output for our space here with such high ceilings and our lack of insulation that we came into winter with. So we went with a pellet stove. We can get a full pallet of the pellets and we just feed them in this hopper. We can f pour a 40 pound bag in here and it'll burn up to 17 hours on low setting. If we got it on the high setting, it'll burn a roughly eight hours and it pushes out a lot of heat and is so much easier than a wood stove though not as romantic <laughs> but we still get our fire you know it's not like just a furnace so we still get that little lovely fire aspect of it which we both really wanted next to our stove we have sam's soap area and her storage for her business she makes lovely amazing cold process soap moving over is kind of the other half of our uh <laughs> closet i would say it's just all of our hanging clothes next to our coat rack and shoe rack next to the front door. With no closet, you can't really hide these things, which has also taken us a little bit to get used to. But 
it's another one of the things about living in a round space. You get to see everything and know that it's there. And when we do laundry, we have to put it away <laughs> because we have to look at it every day. You can't hide it in the corner. And that kind of sums up the inside of our dome. So why don't we go take a look at our outhouse? And this is our composting outhouse. This is the first structure that we built on the property for good reason. While you're working, you have to use the utilities. <laughs> so this is actually a vaulted, it's got two chambers. When one is full, you cap it and it turns into soil over the next year while you use the second chamber. And then that soil can be distributed into the forest or theoretically used for a garden. It's not something that we are interested in doing at the moment, so we'll feed the forest with it. Let's go check out our last structure by the dome. It's our bathhouse. So this is our bathhouse, and right next to our bathhouse is actually where we keep all of our water storage. So our water tank is held in there with our pump that is either fed by a hose when we don't have rain, or we have our rain catch system that comes in and feeds it and fills it. So in the wintertime, we run off of a lot of water from the rain. Our water tank actually feeds into a tankless hot water heater that is run off propane, and that heats and runs our sink and our showers and our bath. So let's take a look inside. So this is our bathhouse. Um, we went with kind of a Roman tub, like Japanese soak house vibe, where it's catered more to just the bath and the shower. And so our color choice kind of reflects a more cozy, kind of elegant, relaxing, tranquil vibe. And so we went with the dark slate with the dark emerald green walls. And eventually, as the bathhouse is always still in the works, we will trim everything out in cedar and kind of, you know, get it all looking really touched up and perfect. In addition to our shower and our bath here, we actually decided to uh, make an outdoor shower as well. So let me show you that. I personally love showering outside. Uh, we're surrounded by nature on all sides, except for this one, which we got this nice little privacy wall. In the hot summer months here in the Pacific Northwest, we love outdoor showers. They are so refreshing. So the dome kit for the 30 foot was 16,000 and we paid 8,000 up front as like our deposit. Mm -hmm. And then was it like when the dome was ready, we paid the rest? It was eight weeks later before they ship it, you, uh, you pay the rest. We did not have that money. So I went to our local credit union, trying to get a personal loan to see if I would be approved for that. And I, uh, tried to get it for more money than what the dome cost to like help with building and all that and was not approved just based on the amount and they just don't really do loans like that yeah and so we're kind of like oh well what do we do and <laughs> i don't know if this is like the best route but what we did was we looked at credit cards that had no interest and so for the first just, 15 months or so yeah whatever we kind of like new credit card deal we could get of like no interest and we just did that and ended up being perfect because like we paid some of our own money for the deposit on the dome and then did the rest on the credit card but since there was no interest it was like better than the loan because we yeah. paid that off before the interest was going to kick in anyway the the cost of the the total thing right now i think we're right around like 35 probably total for everything which for what we have i think is really unique and special when we first moved in september uh, first of uh, 2021 we were kind of behind on a bunch of projects and we were like well we'll just get them done you know winters are around here are pretty mild you know usually and this the winter that we had was was different so it was kind of like I've, I've said it a hundred times and but it was instead of trial by fire we got trial by ice yeah and, we got uh, hit pretty hard <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, that's my like little dad joke that i like to say so we we hadn't insulated our floor 
and we didn't get the insulation kit that Pacific Domes offered because we couldn't afford it at the time. So we were like, well, yeah. we'll just get a really big st wood stove. And so we did, and it just, it was hard. We have 16 foot ceilings, all the heat come, goes out the ceiling. So heating, yeah, I, I agree. It was probably the biggest disadvantage, you know, and, and, it's, and it's fixable, you know, it's something we're learning on and, and, and working on. There's, you yeah. know, we have a, we have a plan. <laughs> I love that our space is like very intimate. Everything is right here. All of our most favorite items and things that we use, like everything's here with us. And we've always had roommates. We lived alone for like a year or so and then moved back in with roommates. And so now it's nice to like, just have our own space together and wake up together and make coffee and just kind of enjoy this and like we can have alone time together even though we're in a small space. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.